speaking of things that you should be able to take if you're not actually getting benefits of eating enough meat like we had perhaps evolved to do so creatine namely i'd say monohydrate because that's the one that is just not retardedly expensive uh, to use that word uh, right as and please many of our listeners but uh but yeah creatine monohydrate I think there's definitely something to be said with the amount of people that can benefit from it because they're probably not getting enough meat in their diet because that's probably what we evolved to thrive under. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the video you sent to me, we were, we looked over it and basically saw, oh, these vegans, vegetarians have the most benefits from supplementing five grams of creatine monohydrate. And it could help them normalize their brain because we know how sometimes <laughs> it can be on the lower end the lower sphere of processing and functioning there's a lot of people that talk about it with the bodybuilding stuff too and i think it's gone beyond that because of course it's in energy drinks now too like bang right. popularized it yep although it's not really going to be bioavailable in the least in liquid form being like just sitting in a can like that it's at least on the label, so it gets some buzz towards it. But, um, but yeah, I think people kind of blow out the benefits with creatine to an extent because some some people will like send me a DM, probably you as well. They're like, I want to take creatine, like, and they they think it's like the most serious shit. Like, they think it's going to completely look that the make them look like a bodybuilder. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you're not working hard at all in the gym, then you're still not going to get any benefit from it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it definitely works. I've been on it for ever since I basically started working out to an extent. And uh, beyond that, I mean, of course, a lot of people that you're getting blood tests good on you, the creatinine will show up and it will probably be slightly elevated if you've been on creatine. Mm-hmm. Even... And a lot of the studies say this is only during the loading phase, not usually, not during maintenance. But for me, at least, I know that it's just always been a little bit high. So that's that's just me. And some doctors are stupid enough to not realize that it could be from creatine supplementation. Because I've had one doctor, the first one, that said um, creatinine is not related to creatine intake. And I said, oh, okay. And then I had another doctor that said, oh, it's probably because you're on creatine, right? It's, it's just different, too, because the amount of people and their, I wouldn't say like their target demographic, but their average kind of patient, they're not a trained person at all, and they wouldn't take supplements. So, um, so it catches some of them off guard because they just never see it. But other people may be with it or maybe a fit doctor themselves and understand that's part of the whole situation and very frequently supplemented so have you taken creatine ever yeah i took it for a while yeah back in high school and college i would take creatine monohydrate i did get into like the creatine marketing i took creatine pure for a little bit like capsule form it tastes so like plasticky and chemically yeah i was not thrilled about that but i did take creatine i was on a supplement game for a while i just enjoyed the creatine the protein like i had it on hand all the time and I definitely felt like I noticed the difference. I mean, I'd be working out consistently, doing the CrossFit games, workout stuff. Uh, not the actual CrossFit games, but I would be in that world for about for a while and taking creatine. I feel like it made me look more muscular and may have given me more energy, but my issue has always been mobility. So if I could find something that would improve the mobility of my body and the elasticity like collagen, things that could help that part of me. Mm-hmm. I would be much more likely to uh, try something like that out versus creatine, which I mean, it definitely works. It seems pretty, pretty affordable when you get the right one. It doesn't seem like it's a bad addition to your supplement stack. It's more of something that I'm, I was unsure of what was going to happen when I stopped taking it. So I just kept taking it because I wasn't going to uh, be excited when it was all out. And I ended up having to like, I thought I'd lose all my gains and my muscles would shed off and I would sweat out all my muscle gains. So, yeah. Yeah, I, de- I think there's a lot of people that get self-conscious about it to an extent, but 
some people, um, when they're doing prepping for a show or even a photo shoot, they may play around with getting off of it and desaturating your muscles and then saturating them up again. Because it, it's kind of mm-hmm. similar to carb cycling, I believe, where you limit your carbs to an extent so much, then your body is more sensitive and will uptake more than you did prior. So that can achieve a look. But some people really may want to go for that drier look of the skin because sometimes people will get really puffy and it may uh, it may interfere with the uptake of water in their muscles to the point where they look softer. Like they could mm-hmm. be low body fat, but it looks soft, if that makes sense. Um, like less striations and, and such. So, um, I mean, some of the studies here, there's there's been like a very small notable testosterone increase just you know very small i would probably Mm -hmm. guess it's probably no more than like 40 nanograms per deciliter to be honest but it could be consistent i can get you into the thousand club you know yeah perhaps yeah depending on where you're at they say there's a moderate increase on subjective well-being like general happiness and i feel like that's more an explanation of they're probably doing strength training (laughs) Yeah, that would creatine. definitely make you happier. Yeah, so I think that's probably unrelated to creatine, but perhaps, I mean, it could be part of that mental health type of uh, benefits that you get from creatine. So, uh, yeah, there's the small degree of fatigue reduction is big because having an ability to do one to three more reps on some intense lift will definitely help as long as you push it, push it out. Right. And, That's uh, what you uh, always been telling me about it, which makes a lot of sense. If you can just <clears throat> utilize it to um, uh, have that extra, not energy boost, but have that extra capacity for your muscles and then utilize that and not just, you know, pussyfoot around and feel like you're doing the same workouts while taking creatine, expecting to just be bigger because your body's going to absorb more water in your muscles, but actually utilizing your muscles uh, more effectively so that you're getting more of the ripping and the uh, regeneration growth from that muscle versus just thinking you're taking something and it's going to give you more size because that's what most people probably think of when they think of creatine is like oh i take this it absorbs water into my muscles and my muscles look bigger Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of people think that and uh maybe the case for them and i yeah truly it's it's replenishing the phosphocreatine pathway which is the first form of fuel for your fast twitch muscle fibers usually it also helps with cardio to an extent but it it won't help as much as doing some intense resistance training i mean other than that i think it's definitely something that a lot of people are not getting enough of so there's a space to fill when it comes to supplementing and that's why it's so highly backed with all the studies but regardless it's like well are you eating enough meat are you eating enough protein Mm -hmm. and i think (laughs) part of the reason why we see it paired with all the people doing the general supplement stack whey protein and creatine it's like well if you stopped fucking drinking down all of your protein in the form of whey Mm -hmm. then you would get foods that have sufficient creatine perhaps um, eating red meat and even not a lot of bodybuilder type people or people starting out thinking they know what it takes are eating enough red meat to get enough creatine. They're just eating chicken or white fish, like the shitty uh, tilapia and shit. Lots of tilapia. That's a, I'm always frustrated when I see these <clears throat> fitness people posting their tilapia meals. I'm like, why? Yeah. Why do they do that? This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like, like The Rock, like I've seen his meal plan or some shit. And a lot of these Hollywood types, it's... It's fascinating to me because everything is so devoid of my, or the micronutrients, including things like creatine, which you probably wouldn't think of as a micronutrient, but definitely is. So they eat these foods that are so devoid of mostly anything, save for broccoli maybe, and then they're just supplemented and put on perhaps injections of some sort to help support their hormones and their micronutrient lack. So it's a weird way to go about it uh, because it's so focused on one thing that's not giving you everything and then also playing the other side of things because they really just think about food as calories and macros at the end of the day and 
the fact that creatine is one of the most studied beneficial supplements for people proves that it's not all about calories. Because ask anyone how much calories is in five grams of creatine and zero to, <laughs> to, say, zero. It, to say it with the proper enunciation. Zero. So zero. It's a circle. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's basically all I got to say. And then even the people step on the scale from doing a creatine load or something, you gained three to five pounds from starting creatine. Is that calories in or calories out? You tell me. <laughs> I mean, it's water retention. We know that. But ideally, if you were in a deficit, then you should expel more water, right? Or at least weight. Because, you know, usually they won't discern between weight and water, fat and muscle. Creatine is, is good stuff. And, like, I take the Gorilla Mind Nitric, the non-SIM pre-workout, and it has creatine already in it, which helps save me because... I usually do the unflavored creatine because it's not overly expensive and that is just really flavorless. It's, I mean, it's not a joy to choke down, but I'll do it. When I took creatine HCL in like concrete is the brand that does creatine HCL. Usually I had a, a couple sleepwalking episodes that I can, you know, count on that happened and nothing bad happened, but I, I was like, oh, I was sleepwalking. Because in my mind, I had a dream that I just walked all the way down to the freaking garage for no reason. All right, Ty Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go see if Ty Lopez was studying in my garage next to my Lamborghini. But yeah, so be careful with the creatine HCL. Because I, I mean, I dose that pretty properly. Because that's more, I wouldn't say more potent stuff. You just need less of it in the measurement, like scooper. But I still would not spend fifteen twenty dollars more than just regular creatine monohydrate ever. Get get your red meat in, and uh, perhaps you you won't even ever have to take creatine. Dude, that's kind of my game plan because I've been tempted yeah. to get back into it once I take a more serious workout approach. But there's also a part of me that's just like, what's the point? You know, I mean, it's cheap. It's not like it's going to do anything. But some people say it might cause hair loss. Who knows? Oh yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, there's there's definitely that, and it's surprising it's not brought up as much. But um, I think in the same realm, like how it says it increases testosterone a little bit, I think the DHT is probably such a small extent that it won't really help, or it won't really do much of anything. I think if you're probably predisposed to getting issues with DHT and hair loss, then that's going to already be its doing, and creatine probably won't help and you can try and cut it out it won't make a huge difference in my mind the yeah. levels are important but they have different effects on different people like testosterone levels yeah and i think it's only one study that showed dht and hair loss it was double right. blind and that but there's only 20 subjects so um let's see yeah so it's saying the increase in testosterone at least in this study was failing to meet statistical significance. So they could have perhaps actually increased their testosterone, thus also increasing their DHT, but most of the testosterone they increased was converted to DHT. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe mix in some freaking turmeric with your creatine and make like a... Have you had those golden milk uh, drinks? with the uh the turmeric it has a uh, coconut milk as well have you Probably. seen those yeah. yeah those are pretty good but yeah maybe maybe try that get a little bit of a balancing effect and see if if it actually if the turmeric will negate the effects or just get proper blood flow stop being a dumbass yeah eat stop being a dumbass dogs and drinks whey protein for your for your protein sources